in the weapons used by Russia in Ukraine, including rocket engine blades, small arms components, and missile casings. Key parts rely on the production of CNC machine tools. Recently, the Financial Times disclosed a notable fact based on Russian customs data. Russia's dependence on CNC machine tools is growing. In July 2022, Russia's CNC imports totaled $120 million, a significant increase from the less than $50 million before the war. Of these, CNC products from China accounted for 57%, about $68 million, up substantially from $6.5 million before the war. These Chinese CNC machine tools still contribute to Russia's national economic production. They are mainly focused on the low-end market and typically used in general mechanical processing and automobile production. The CNCs also support Russian military activities to some extent and have thus become a target of international sanctions. Despite the significant increase in exports of Chinese CNC machine tools, Russian defense factories remain skeptical about their quality preferring high-precision equipment from Germany and Japan. For instance, Aeroscan, a company producing the Lancet drone for the Russian military, does not use Chinese CNC machine tools. Its production process is entirely based on Western precision machine tools. Furthermore, CFG, a Russian CNC equipment importer sanctioned by the United States, provides precision machine tools for defense companies, but imports only a limited amount from China. The Financial Times' disclosure of this information at this time might be laying the groundwork for the imminent comprehensive sanctions against the Chinese financial system. Previously, the international community had not imposed financial sanctions on Chinese companies supporting Russia, partly due to concerns that early action might prompt Chinese companies to develop countermeasures. However, with the evolving situation, the United States and other countries may now deem it the right time to adopt tougher sanctions as the global financial capital's withdrawal from China nears completion. In Russia, the production of complex weapons like intercontinental ballistic missiles relies heavily on precision metalworking, and the supply chain for these CNC devices is controlled by allies of the United States. Russia has almost entirely depended on equipment imported from U.S. allies from 2003 to 2023 for its weapons production. Kalinin Machine Building Plant which produces anti-aircraft missiles, uses computer controls and hard alloy instruments, nearly 100% of which are imported from the West. Precision parts produced by Western CNC machines are more effective and consistent than those from China. This mechanical apparatus, utilized for the assembly of the S-300, was manufactured by Tos Varnsdorf in the Czech Republic. Russians greatly prefer Western German and Japanese products, and are reluctant to use substitutes from China. Russian CNC industry experts note that compared to German and Japanese brands, Chinese machine tools fall short in precision, accuracy, and lifespan, failing to meet military industrial needs. Chinese 5-axis CNC machining tools are challenging to use, with a significant gap in stability, reliability, and efficiency compared to Western products. German and Japanese machines can operate 24 hours a day while Chinese machine tools need to be shut down after a few hours of work. Western machines can process one part per second, while Chinese equipment might take 1.5 seconds. Producing complex surfaces like car exteriors is difficult with Chinese machine tools. Additionally, key components of China's high-end CNC machine tools, like control systems, often rely on imports from Germany and Japan. Here are videos about how these CNC machine tools process products, According to the analysis of a Russian blogger, Chinese-made CNC machine tools and equipment currently cannot match Western products in quality and technology, with no immediate prospects of bridging this gap. For example, in the field of precision laser cutting machines, although Chinese products may produce stronger lasers, Russia tends to choose the more superior German Trumpf brand for high-precision cutting tasks. China's limitations in the field of materials science have led to a lower technological level in its CNC tools. For example, the manufacturing of Chinese aircraft engines and high-speed train axles still relies on imports. The quality and durability of Chinese CNC tools are poor, and in practical use, Russia has to frequently repair and replace them. So in effect, Russia has purchased inferior quality products, as well as spending more money on repairs, inadvertently achieving the effect of U.S. sanctions. The focus of U.S. government sanctions 
is to make Russia spend more money on inferior goods. Since late March 2023, the globally renowned machine tool manufacturer DMG Mori began sending notices to its customers, requiring the installation of a remote management system to monitor the location and usage of its machine tools. This measure has resulted in some of Russia's imported CNC machine tools being remotely locked, causing some factories to halt operations. In fact, Japanese manufacturers had already implemented remote shutdown controls on CNC machine tools in Russia since April of the previous year. Despite these restrictions, Russia continues to strive to import CNC machine tools from Germany and Japan. Exports from German and Japanese brands to Russia remain considerable, accounting for nearly one-fourth. It has been reported that Russia's Kaliber missiles are manufactured using German CNC machine tools, with over 700 such missiles produced since the full outbreak of the war. These Western brand machine tools are mainly transported by air from Europe through member countries of the Eurasian Economic Union, such as Kyrgyzstan, Armenia, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, and Georgia. The internal free trade and movement of people within the Eurasian Economic Union facilitate the cross-border transportation of Western machine tools. Additionally, Russia is purchasing Japanese Fanuk CNC machine tools, circulating in Turkey, Kazakhstan, and China. However, with the potential for the U.S. to strengthen secondary sanctions and the possibility of further disengagement of the Western society from Russia, there is uncertainty about Russia's continued access to these high-end machine tools. Therefore, Russia has started importing a large number of machine tools from China as a contingency plan to deal with potential supply interruptions. As CNC machine tools are large equipment, it is difficult for private companies to export them from China to Russia. The export of such equipment from China usually involves national-level decisions, especially for companies directly linked to the Chinese military. Take Wuhan Huazhong numerical control as an example. The company was sanctioned by the United States from 2008 to 2010 for violating laws prohibiting the transfer of weapon technology or equipment to Syria, Iran, and North Korea. The company also cooperates with Shenyang Aircraft Corporation, which manufactures the J-35. Wuhan Huazhong CNC is a major contractor in China's defense industry for replacing foreign CNC systems with domestic ones. Therefore, the Chinese government strongly supports its export to Russia, both to support the company's bottom line and to promote the autonomy of the machine tool industry. These companies do not care about Western sanctions and specialize in developing in Belt and Road countries and Russia. Another significant event that may indicate the beginning of international financial sanctions against China is the discovery of a large number of Chinese-made weapons in Gaza. These weapons are equipped for military groups and are not available on the black market. Recently, the Israel Defense Forces founded an investigation that Hamas militants used a large number of Chinese-made weapons. This finding is no longer an unfounded rumor, but a reality supported by solid evidence. According to Lewd Media, recent reports show that Hamas leader Mohammed Deif has direct communication with Xi Jinping's office and receives full support from the Chinese Communist Party. It is claimed that Hamas's weapons, combat strategies, organizational structures, and funding all come directly from China. These supports are usually provided under the guise of aid to Palestine. To evade inspection, weapons and ammunition are dismantled into various components and disguised as humanitarian aid materials, such as medicines, food, and sugar. The weapons seized include submachine guns and grenade launchers, in such large quantities that they could equip an entire corps. Considering Hamas's size, with about 30,000 troops, this is equivalent to a complete corps. The amount of ammunition captured reaches millions, even tens of millions of bullets, and several million RPG rounds, which are almost impossible to purchase on the black market. The Israeli government has expressed deep concern about these situations and is investigating how these weapons and military equipment fell into the hands of Hamas. An Israeli spokesperson, citing intelligence, expressed surprise at the discovery of a large number of Chinese weapons. Moreover, these weapons and communication technologies are described as top-notch, including very advanced explosives and in huge quantities. According to intelligence obtained by Lewd Media from inside the Chinese Communist Party, 
The so-called advanced explosives have a very unique formula that only the United States, Russia, and China can replicate, far beyond the capabilities of Middle Eastern terrorist groups. This explosive is extremely efficient, producing a huge explosive effect even in small quantities, second only to nuclear bombs. It is claimed that this explosive was created by China through stealing American technology. The manufacture of top-grade explosives is highly complex and typically cannot be accomplished without specialized equipment and unique separation technologies. Nanjing University of Science and Technology, formerly part of the Artillery Engineering Department of the PLA Military Academy, is renowned for its expertise in explosives and propellants research, but has also faced sanctions from the United States. The key to these explosives lies in their stabilizers and activators being packaged separately, making them undetectable even by well-trained sniffer dogs. For instance, certain substances that appear to be ordinary sugar can transform into explosives upon the addition of an activator. These activators are usually placed in small glass bottles, with just 10 grams capable of producing a substantial explosion. The remaining components are disguised as everyday items like flour and transported through conventional means, while the critical activators can be easily carried onto planes. It is claimed that the CCP has been researching this technology to assist terrorists in circumventing Western security systems. Although black markets can provide American-made weapons like the M16 assault rifle, military-grade communication systems or top-grade explosives are typically accessible only through channels provided by the CCP. The large quantities of Chinese weapons and ammunition, including millions to tens of millions of bullets, seized by Israel, suggest that their source is unlikely to be ordinary black markets, but rather state-sponsored actions by China. According to Chinese regulations, such large-scale ammunition exports must be approved by the Central Military Commission and Xi Jinping himself. It is important to note that the production of these explosives in China involves chemical plants in multiple regions, some in Sichuan, others in Jiangsu, each producing different chemical precursors. This decentralized production model is for safety reasons, to prevent the chemical substances from being hijacked by internal unstable elements. The chemical plants themselves are often unaware that their products will be used for assembling ammunition. China is particularly concerned about Israel's ongoing attacks on Gaza, fearing that if Hamas is breached, concrete evidence of the CCP's support for terrorism, including documents, materials, and lists, could be exposed. Therefore, the CCP is vigorously advocating for a ceasefire. Given the intelligence capabilities and international political sensitivity of the United States and Israel, they are likely well aware of the CCP's actions. The next developments are expected to be intriguing, as evidenced by a significant recent event. On January 4th, Fitch Ratings, one of the three major global rating agencies, downgraded the credit ratings of China's four major state-owned asset management companies, China Sinda, China Orient, Huarong, and Great Wall. The downgrades are primarily due to concerns over the financial conditions of these companies and the expected reduction in government support. Notably, the rating of China Orient Asset Management was downgraded from A to A-, while Huarong Asset and Great Wall Asset were downgraded from BB plus to BBB. These four companies are responsible for purchasing, managing, and disposing of the non-performing assets stripped from China's four major state-owned banks, Bank of China, China Construction Bank, China Development Bank, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. They acquire and manage these bad assets, securitize them, and then finance them in the U.S. and Western markets by issuing bonds. Each company manages trillions of yuan in assets raising significant funds in international financial markets like Wall Street. Furthermore, these asset management companies have extremely high profit margins. For example, if the loan on a property worth 1 billion yuan cannot be repaid, the property will be auctioned and transferred to these companies. They might acquire these assets for as low as tens of millions of yuan, and after repackaging, their market value could rise back to 1 billion, yielding massive profits. However, these operations are carried out through the administrative power of the CCP government. The decision by Fitch Ratings to downgrade the default ratings of these highly profitable and seemingly infallible state-owned enterprises suggests a impending collapse within the Chinese government. Fitch is preemptively alerting Wall Street that, despite the profitability of these four management companies, 
Caution is needed as the Chinese government might fall, and these companies may no longer have the capacity to seize money. Additionally, the rating downgrade prevents them from issuing bonds on Wall Street, impacting their performance. The direct targeting of these four major state-owned asset management companies is a more significant blow to China than Moody's downgrade. The CCP government's use of administrative power to confiscate private assets of the Chinese people has been effectively blocked. Therefore, the downgrade of these four management companies is a significant indicator. In China, private asset management companies find it difficult to participate in the disposal of bankrupt assets, as such business is typically directly handled by state-owned banks controlled by the CCP to state-owned asset management companies. These companies, under the guise of Western legal frameworks, subtly appropriate private capital for the purpose of nationalization. Now, Fitch's comprehensive blockade against the four major asset management companies is a crucial move in the financial war.